Welcome to the Middle Room Work. Today, I'm going to show you the brand new Witsmaker L136 Bot Laser Engraver. Without further ado, let's get into it. Wizmaker is a relatively new brand. I couldn't find much information about their background and experience. They claim to focus on innovation and quality and only time will tell how they are going to rank among competition. All I can say for now from their first and only machine along with the various accessories is that they look great and so they are set in the right direction. This is an expert level desktop laser engraver with a beautiful design, an air assist ready laser module and upgradable functionalities. Before getting any further, a quick note, I've received this machine free of charge by Witsmaker with the request to review it. However, I'm not being paid by Witsmaker uh, nor any one of its affiliate. And as usual, I like to keep my video reviews unbiased. Therefore, all of the information, all of the opinion that I'm about to share in this video, they represent my honest opinion about this machine. And as a such, you know, at the end of the video, I'm also sharing what I like, what I don't like, and what I think instead it should be improved. All right, with this out of the way, let's keep going. As usual, I break down my video reviews into different sections so that I can try and cover all of the aspects of the machine. So have a look to the timeline below and jump to the section of your interest as you please. Starting with the assembly, the machine comes partially pre-assembled and it's very simple and fast to put all the pieces together. I suggest laying down all the profiles in the correct position and orientation. Then you can simply slide the profiles and screw the 16 fasteners. The gantry is the easiest gantry I've ever installed in any laser engraver as all you need to do is to place it on the Y-axis trolley and then to screw four fasteners. Finally, you need to slide in the Y-axis synchronous road, which is also very simple and plug the wiring, which is also straightforward. It literally takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get up and running. Now, the machine has a cool design and the red color looks great and give it a professional appearance. The frame is entirely custom design with property profiles and railing, but it uses standard rollers. As for the stiffness, it is good enough, but it deflects a little bit sidewise. Therefore, I recommend checking the squareness when placing the machine on a surface, as there may be a millimeter of deflection. And this, of course, would be ruining up all of your upcoming projects. Plus, it sits on threaded feet. Now, the feet can be upgraded to taller ones, and this is particularly useful when you work with the uh, rotary tool. And in fact, they are sold uh, with a Witsmaker rotary chuck and roller tool. Now, the machine comes with a bunch of features. Start with air assist ready laser module, which is built in air nozzle. And all you need is to plug an air hose from any pump of your choice and you're set to go. Unfortunately, the machine does not offer a built in air control for the moment, but the brand says that they are working on it. Wizmaker sells a variable flow rate air pump, which in my opinion has a stunning design and I really like its futuristic appearance and is both quiet and effective allowing you to make clean cuts. The machine has an offline control function built in, however, it requires a controller with a display to use it, which doesn't come with the machine and I couldn't find one on their website. Once installed, it should allow you to work offline with an SD card without a PC connection. Speaking with Witsmaker, this is coming up soon along with a dedicated mobile app. Finally, a bunch of safety features, including a tilt warning and an emergency button. Now, the machine is offered in three different power variation, 12, 24, and 36 watts. The one I got came with a fixed focus six diode laser module with a rated optical power output of 36 watt. And the power performance is very good. However, more on that later. The module has a standard design with a powerful and effective top fan, which is necessary to maintain the six diode cool. The module mount on a standard sliding rail clamp with a setting knob located on the back side. The adjustment of the height is traditional and straightforward. 
All you need to do is to place the provided 4mm clearance plate on the material, loosen the knob, lower the module and tighten the knob back. The lens maintenance is not as simple as some other machine, but it's not terrible either. You need to unscrew two bolts and unplug the internal hose to remove the nozzle. And then you get access to the lens, or at least uh, the side that requires regular cleaning. As for the accessories, the machine comes with few testing pieces, a cleaning cloth and an SD card with the stick reader. All right, let's now get into the capabilities. As usual, I run some testing in order to assess the performance of the machine using the most common materials. And for the testing, I run the machine with the air pump from its maker so that you know exactly what to expect if you decide to go ahead and buy the bundle. Going ahead with the cutting, uh, 3 mm or 1 8 of an inch birch plywood cleanly at 600 mm per minute, 95% power. Now, you could go as fast as 700 mm per minute, but you would end up with stringing on the back side. This will basically leave your part with rough edges, and therefore that is not something that you want. I would go conservatively at no more than 550 mm per minute for a good and consistent result each time. Then 6 mm perch plywood clean cut at 300 mm per minute, 95% power. 3 mm HDF, which is harder than MDF, I get good results at 500 mm per minute, 95% power, with rougher results at 550 and 600 mm per minute. 3 mm HDF, good results at 600 mm per minute, 95% power. And this was actually an impressive result as I cut a large project with this parameter without any problems. 3 mm gray paperboard, which is the same material used in food packaging, clean cut at 600 mm per minute and higher at 90% power. 3.2 mm acrylic, 400 mm per minute, 90% power in a single pass. And it could go even faster, but popping out the 400 mm per minute feels like I was already on the limit and after that you will be getting rough edges. 1.5 mm coated ABS, 1500 mm per minute, 90% power in a single pass. As for the maximum depth, setting the height to the uh, minimum possible, I was able to go through about 28 mm of pine wood in two passes at 100 mm per minute, 100% power. A single pass with the same parameter cuts about 24 mm. Now, I believe I could go deeper, but I didn't have a thicker timber to test this time. For the engraving performance, I first needed to rise up the maximum speed in the GRBL configuration from 6000 default to machine rated top speed of 24,000 mm per minute. On birch playwood, as you can see, it produces good results all the way up to the advertised top speed of 24,000 mm per minute. So you simply need to choose the color tone you like and to go for it. MDF, you get similar results to Playwood with visible engravings at machine's top speed. I then tackled some uh, real projects and they turned out good. Now, compared to a typical 24 watt laser module, the machine is definitely faster and I see an average increase in speed of about 40% with most of the material and the performance is great. Now, in the projects I cut, cuttings were good and consistent throughout from the first to the last without any sign of power drops. I also made a simple fit test to find the curve offset uh, so that the pieces can stack together and on a 3mm laminated HDF uh, that averages at about minus 0.15mm for both the horizontal and the vertical slots. Alright, let me now tell you what I like, what I don't like and what I think it should be improved, starting with the pros. Now, the machine has a great appearance and it absolutely stands out in the workshop. The assembly is very fast and quick. The module is powerful and the fan is not as loud as other machine. Plus, it is built in a high protection shield, which not only protects your eyes, but it also allows you to clearly see through while framing. The air pump is beautiful, compact and quiet and the external power supply allow you to use it with other machines. Now, what I think instead it should be improved. Now, the machine is offline ready. However, for the time being, the functionality cannot be used without an offline controller. Therefore, the machine should come with an offline controller or at least to have 
the app that allow you to run files off the SD card. Then the fan runs constantly also while idling and although it is not the loudest as I said it is still noisy and annoying if it's running for a long time. Now I know that this is done for pre-cooling purposes however cooling and pre-cooling they can be handled with a different cooling strategy. Now what I didn't like uh, the machine doesn't have an air control built in which means that you manually need to operate the air pump and the most straightforward way to do that is to engrave and cut in separate session so that you can turn on the air before getting into the uh, cutting session. The retail price is lower than custom frame laser engraver of similar power. However, the current discount at about $1,000 uh, place it at the same price tag like other custom frame 36 watt laser engraver, but you don't get an offline controller or the air pump. All right, let me now tell you whether you should buy it, consider it, or discard it. Taking into consideration the pros and the cons that I've discussed, the look and the performance, plus the price, I would consider this machine. All right, this is pretty much all. Now, I hope you found this uh, video helpful and informative. If you liked it, click the thumb up button below, and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!